All right, here's another heat transfer example problem. This one states, a cube with surface area A on each side is heated from the bottom with a uniform heat flux Q double prime. The cube is at temperature T and is assumed to be isothermal. The process is also assumed to be at steady state. The cube loses heat to the environment by convection. Using the variables provided, derive an energy balance representing the energy balance of the cube drive an equation representing the energy balance of a cube. So our first step is to define our control volume, our system boundary. So we're going to define this system boundary um, just being the cube itself. So energy is getting in from this source. It could be like a stovetop or something. And energy is getting out, or it's crossing that system boundary and leaving by convection. So we have this convective term going out. So our first our next step after we've defined our control volume with our system boundaries would be to write out an energy balance. So we're going to do an energy balance on basically the cube itself, nothing on the outside of it. So we're going to have an in term crossing that boundary and entering our system and an out term crossing that boundary and leaving our system. So first we write out accumulation in, out, and then generation or consumption. All right, so how is energy being accumulated in our system? So again, as in the last video, our system, we're told that it's at steady state, which means there's no energy being accumulated with time. So the change in total energy of our cube is just equal to zero with time. That's going to have units of watts or joules per second. We are using the rate form of an energy balance here, which should have units of watts in every added in every term. Remember that when you want to add or subtract terms, which we'll eventually be doing, those terms all need to have the same units. So you need to be very careful that each of these terms has consistent units. All right, with that said, how is energy getting into our system? So we're told that it's coming in by this constant flux on the bottom. So we're going to have this flux Q double prime. So we want to think that we want to know that this is a flux and know that we need to multiply that by the area to get the total rate of energy coming in, but a unit check would also help us catch that, where the flux is going to have units of watts per meter squared, which is not going to jive with our consistent units where we want every term to have units of watts. So we know based on the definition of flux or based on doing some unit analysis that we need to multiply our flux by the area. Okay, how is energy getting out? So physically, we're told that energy is getting out by convection. So we could certainly have just plug in Q convection here, and that would be fine, although it may not tell us everything we want to know. So instead of just plugging in Q convection, we can actually plug in the definition of Newton's law of cooling in here. So we have Q convection is equal to H a, and because we're assuming that energy is leaving our cube, we're going to use, we're going to assume that it's going out, so we'll use T, our surface temperature, minus T infinity, our bulk fluid temperature. Um, and just as a reminder, H is the convective heat transfer coefficient, which has units of watts per meter squared per Kelvin area is our total area for heat transfer, which is going to have units of meters squared. And actually, we've already defined, we're actually using area as a more specific variable in this problem, where the surface area represents the surface area of one side. So we're actually going to need to multiply this by 5 to get our total area. So what I would do is I would actually plug in this whole thing into our out term. And normally we could just sort of skip this step of doing the substitution. So our out is going to be 5 times the area of one side, because we have it leaving by five sides, times h times t minus t infinity. We're not told anything about generation in this problem, so it's safe to assume that that's just zero. Um, so to complete our energy balance, we need to remember that accumulation equals in minus out plus generation. So we're going to take this term, which we're assuming to be positive, but it's actually going to be negative as it shows up in our energy balance because we have that energy leaving our system. So we get zero is equal to our flux times the area of one side minus five times the area of one side times h times t minus t infinity.
So this problem is interesting. It's not very specific. It's just saying derive an equation, and that is a very valuable skill, knowing how to derive an equation. This is a fairly simple one, but what we have produced is an equation. So we have one equation, and we can use this one equation to solve for one unknown. So presumably we'd be given some combination of these variables and we could solve for the other. So if we were given the flux coming in oops, and and H and T infinity and A we could go ahead and solve that for the temperature of the cube. If we're given the temperature of the cube and T infinity area and H, we could go ahead and solve for a flux. So it's it's really useful. We could solve for any number of these different quantities. Um, presume that we're given enough information for all the other quantities. We presumably, since we have one equation, to have a fully specified system, we'd be solving for one unknown. But the point here is, it's it's a really good practice to carefully and systematically think through this energy balance, come up with a nice clean algebraic equation, and once you've got that nice clean algebraic equation you can use that to solve for whatever quantity it is that you need to find.